Hey UB chefs, welcome to this weekend's menu. I'm going to shortly get cooking the 10 dishes, take you through step by step, really, really easy to plate up. Remember, if you want to order uh, for future menus, we've got menus going into January now online, we've got Valentine's online as well. For all of our January menus, sneaky little heads up. If you use the code YBC22, that will give you 22% off your total order. How about that? So, let's get cooking for now. Hope you have a great week. Let's start off the menu for our weekly bake. So we've got Marmite sourdough for you this week. This is going in the oven now, eight to 10 minutes in the paper or until it crisps up. When it comes out, make sure you've got a serrated knife ready to slice through. And then we've got our whipped Marmite butter just there. All you need to do with that, take it out, whack it on your little serving dish. A little bit of extra salt, just on the top like so. Leave that to soften, 10 minutes ideally. This is going in the oven back shortly. Okay, here we go. So Marmite butter is all nice and soft enough. I've got a little bit. Thank you, thank you, chef. Got a little bit of barley. Just want to present the sourdough on. Marmite wafting, delicious. Serrated knife. You can leave it to rest for a few minutes, uh, just so it's not as hot to, to slice. But I'm very hungry, so I'm going for it now. Serrated knife makes really light work of that. Give it a little fan. Presentation's key. There we go. That's your first part of the weekly menu. Marmite sourdough, whipped Marmite butter. First starter for you, we've got a nice little fish cake. So this is smoked haddock in there. Little panko breadcrumb around the outside. That's going in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. Ed's here, I'll get him to do it. There we go. Eight to 10 minutes, take the lid off. That will crisp up nicely. Then we've got the garnish. We've got cucumber ribbons just in here with some nice picked herbs. Get your dressing, a few minutes before you're gonna serve lemon dressing. Pour some onto the cucumber, give it a good mix. And then we're gonna serve it with a whipped dill mayonnaise when we get back. So get the uh, fish cake in the oven, we'll be back shortly. So my fish cake is just coming out of the oven. I'm gonna start getting some of my cucumber. Just make a nice little salad of a cucumber. Fold over a little bit. Thank you, Ed. So there we go. Lovely, crunchy, beautiful color. I'll get one last piece on that. Like so. There we go, you get plenty of herbs. Plenty of those herbs and that lemon dressing. It's all going through, lovely. Fish cake, out it comes. Let's put that just at the base. Then we've got our whipped dill mayonnaise. It's got plenty of lemon in there. You want a good bit per portion. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more of that lemon dressing. Just get a little bit around. Lovely and zippy. Finally, a little bit of rapeseed oil because that splits that colour out as we know. Quick tidy up of the plate. And we're ready to go. Lovely smoked haddock starter to get you off. Here's a classic chicken riette for you now. Nice little glass dish which you can reuse. Take the lid off. This needs to be out at room temperature uh, for at least 10 to 15 minutes just to warm up. It's going to taste so much better. In, in the bottom, you've got the chicken riette, then you've got truffle butter. And look at that, we've shaved some black truffle over the top. Get your uh, little bit of sourdough. So, this is going to go into, uh, into the oven now, about six minutes. Keep it in the paper, and that goes. And then, what you want to do, I'm just going to cut off my top of my little pickle vegetable container. Just in there, we've got some carrots, radish, shallots already. Then, let's get our remoulade, so we've got new celeriac remoulade, but this is kohlrabi in here. Just a pound of mayonnaise, so get all of that out. Remember all these bags are compostable as usual, so that's all ready to go. So both of these all ready to plate up, and then we'll be back shortly once our bread is hot. So if you're watching the top tips in the recipes, you'll see, like I say, flash it just under the grill, Look at that, you get a lovely little shine for the chicken riette. That's the truffle butter on the top. Unwrap your little seeded dough here. See that nice and char grilled, all ready to serve up. Tiniest bit of rapeseed oil on there. Then two spoons. See, I've got two spoons the same, same size. Get a nice big quenelle. 
of that uh, little coal rabbi there and kind of just work it between the two spoons like so and you'll get a nice little shape. So when you get to that stage, onto the top, there you go. Then what we're gonna do, get some of those little pickled vegetables and just garnish them around. There you go, it's radish, you've got some pickled shallots. You just wanna make sure they're nice and even, play the colors. There we go. You can still see my nice bit of truffle butter in between. A little bit of a seed salad on the side. Finally, dress those vegetables up. Cracking starter to cut that bread and spread on the top. Got a lovely little velouté for you now. This is a cauliflower velouté, but it's got toasted cumin seeds going through it. What you need to do, quite simply, just cut off the outside of the bag. I've got a pan here. I'm just gonna squeeze all of that out, like so. And I'm just gonna get that onto the edge of my stove, just to very gently warm up. Then we've got our samosas. So, little garnish with crispy samosas, alu gobi in here, so this is cauliflower and potato curry spiced in there. Six to eight minutes just to warm them up in the oven. Make sure you warm them up without the lid on, really, really important so they crisp. A little bit of butter roasted cauliflower, again into the oven, just four to five minutes, but we're gonna leave the lid on that, just so it almost kind of steams slightly. And then we've got a little bit of coriander oil for when we get back. So, a few minutes and we'll be ready to plate up. There's my velouté. And as I say in the top tip, I did a little dash of milk, just last second, then a nice little frothy, either with a bay mix or a hand mix, nice and frothy. Get your little bits of cauliflower. This is butter roasted cauliflower. Nice little bit of chard on the cauliflower as well, lovely. So good bit of that all in the bowl, in the base of the bowl. Then we're gonna get our samosas. I'm just gonna kind of get a few lent up against the cauliflower. Like so, there we go. Then get your cauliflower velouté and just pour it around. Try not to pour it over the samosas. I want to kind of want to get my spoon in there and get a nice bit of crispy samosa on with that lovely velouté. So there you go. Take your time. Lovely. Then coriander oil. Cut off a little bit of the piping, uh, sorry, the little backpack bag you've got, and there you go, look, you can just get those lovely, a little attractive dots of that very, very tasty coriander oil. And there you go, nice little velouté course about curry spice, hope you enjoy it. Onto a really lovely and rich risotto milanese coming up, look at this, we've got gem lettuce in here with salsa feet, Bake that with a lid on, eight to 10 minutes in the oven, that's gonna go. Then our prawns, the lovely sauté prawns with left some whole, we've peeled some, uh, got a bit of charred lemon in there, six to eight minutes, that's gonna go in for. So just gonna keep that on the side, get my gem lettuce in, first of all, shortly after the prawns and the lemon. Risotto in a pan with the parmesan and the butter that it comes with. The secret weapon is the cooking liquor. So this is what we've made the risotto with, this is our lovely shellfish stock. In there we've got cream, we've got creme fraiche, we've got lots of lemon juice going on. That is essentially gonna go on the heat. We're gonna bring that up to the simmer. Once it's up to the simmer, four minutes cooking, keep stirring it. If you need to sort of uh, make it not quite as thick, if it does thicken up too much, a little dash of water, keep on stirring it, check the seasoning, add a little more, more uh, salt and pepper, sorry if you're not happy with the seasoning. And then basically what we'll do when we come back, we'll have our rice ready, all of our garnishes, and we'll show you how to plate it up. So all ready to plate up my milanese now. You see that's nice and thick, lovely and rich. You can see the little bits of saffron in there. Get that all in the bowl. Use a spatula or a spoon just to make sure you scrape all of that out. Really lovely and rich, that's the key to a risotto milanese. 
saffron, creme fraiche, double cream, lemon juice. There we go. Right, let's finish off. Nice piece of gem lettuce, just on the side. And we've got our charred lemon, making it lovely and sweet, that juice from there. And then just go for it with your prawns. You want to really kind of stand some up. Look at that beautiful colour, lovely. There's quite a lot in here. So, plenty of prawns. Leaving the salsify to finish off. A couple of charred pieces of salsify. Lovely on autumnal. And that is it. Risotto Milanese, guaranteed to impress. And we've got a tibia, a confit duck, in there. You've got the potato fondant, as we've done before at the bottom. Confit duck, wrapped in puff pastry. Look at that, isn't it looking lovely? That's going in the oven. Let's get a 25 to 30 minutes. Or until it's lovely and golden and hot in the centre. Garnish, what are we doing? Fricassee, first of all. So in here you've got sprouts, sprout tops, little cannellini beans, you've got smoked pancetta, and there's your little fricassee sauce at the bottom. So it's like a one hit wonder here. Let's get all of that fricassee sauce out, like so. And then what you want to do with that, if you, little top tip, tiny little bit of water, that will just help it all kind of melt down. That's just gonna go onto the stove when we're ready to serve. It's going to take only about three, four minutes when it comes up to the simmer. Then we've got some flower sprouts or collets, these lovely little things, which we've just coloured off for you. Get the lid back on there. They only need to heat through for about eight to 10 minutes with the lid on, really important. And then we've got a nice little bit of duck sauce to serve with it. Back in about 10 minutes. Just about ready to serve up our confit duck to the end now. There's my sauce. Now let's get spooning on some of that nice fricassee. Sprouts, smoked pancetta. There's my batiria then, that's been in about 25, 30 minutes now. Nice and golden. Plenty of your fricassee on the plate. You can always have a little wipe afterwards, like so. Then let's get a little bit of that sauce. Around. There we go. Quick wipe up, nice and clean. We want that plate to be. Get a spatula. Let's lift our tibia first of all, just onto our little board, and then we can just inch that off the paper, like so. There that comes onto our fricassee. And then we've got those flower sprouts. Remember, we kept the lid on those to keep them nice and uh, not drying out in the oven and just get those around the outside lovely vibrant green they've got a nice little nutty flavor to them all of those on this really is autumn winter eating and then finish off a little bit of sauce tiniest little bit over not much just to shine it up and that cut it with that Madeira sauce around the outside. There we go, more sauce on the, on the table to serve with, but that is our Petivier Compi of Duck main course. Super tasty vegetarian course coming up, pressing of snare and potato, wrapped in foil and brick pastry, going in the oven, about 10 to 12 minutes, just until it's hot through, thank you Ed. And then we've got a stuffed cabbage ball, so we've got a nice spring cabbage on the outside, savoy cabbage inside. Just pop that into your water. That's just going to be all fine in there. Put a lid on it, gently simmering, about eight to 10 minutes. Garnishes, crispy cabbage with a little bit of uh, hazelnuts just on the top of it, one to two minutes in the oven to warm it up. And when we come back, I'll have heated up my celery puree in a pan, and also we've got this hazelnut dressing to finish it off. That's my celery puree. Plates all ready to go. Hazelnut dressing is all on there. Get your little cabbage parcel, pair of scissors, cut off the top of the film. And what we're gonna do, get a spoon. I've just got a little bit of absorbent paper. You could use a J cloth if you prefer. Just basically turn that over, pull that film off, like so. There it is. A little bit of seasoning on the top. 
then we'll grab our pressing. I'm gonna get that off the tray first of all. That's our celeriac and potato. And then lift that off onto the plate. There we go. Then we'll get our nice steamed cabbage ball. Put that just at the back. Finish off. Nice big spoon of the silky celeriac puree. And take your pieces of crispy cabbage and just get them all stacked up on the top. Lovely, this fried cabbage, real marmy taste to it. So a little bit more, just to finish. Wanna balance a good few pieces on that. Put a quick tidy down, and then all you need to do is finish off with that hazelnut dressing. So a little bit over the pressing. And there you go. That's our vegetarian course this week. Pressing of celeriac and potato. Here's a classic rum bar bar for you, a little bit of a twist. Rum bar bar, there it is. Make sure you take your little apricot glaze out of the container. That's gonna go into the oven now, about four minutes. Then that goes, just to warm up. And then what we've got is a little bit of apricot glaze, as I said, that's in the uh, little um, sachet. Just put that into a pan of scalding water, just on the side, or you can put it into a pan and warm it up separately, but this is just to avoid you the pan. Give that a warm, and then when the bar bar comes out, when we serve it, we're gonna glaze it up. Then we've got a rum syrup. This is rum, uh, it's got citrus in there as well, a nice stock syrup. Whilst your bar bar is heating up, get your syrup up to the simmer. We've got our pineapple salad and our white chocolate mousse out already. When our uh, bar bar comes out, I'm going to drop it into the uh, syrup and then we're going to baste it. Take it off the heat, keep on basting it until the bar bar is doubled in size. We'll be back shortly and I'll show you just finishing off this bar bar in the syrup, syrup and then how we plate it. So there's my rum bar bar. See how we've been basting it. It's just about doubled in size. Be very careful with it at this stage because it is very delicate. Under it with a spoon, onto a little bit of absorbent paper. I'm keeping it actually on the spoon though, so I can lift it on easily when the time comes. So that's all ready to go. Then, see my apricot glaze, I've just taken it out, put it into a pan. You can pour it over if you prefer. What I like to do is just get a pastry brush if you've got one, not vital. Makes it a little bit easier. And give it a lovely lacquer, there you go, good word there, lacquer of apricot glaze all over the top. Reason for this, as you can see, beautiful shine. There it is. Then what I'm gonna do is get my pineapple salt. So pineapple, fresh mint, give it a little stir. And get that all into your bowl. Fresh mint, that's a lovely and fresh note. Now I'm gonna push the pineapple out just to make a little nest. That's gonna sit my bar bar in the center. Lift your bar bar in, like so. Then get a knife. You don't want to slice all the way through, just enough so you can open the bar bar up, just like that. Get your mousse, white chocolate mousse. Pipe away. At this stage, you want to be ready to serve up, ready to go to the table. See, look at that. Pipe the mousse in shot of your favourite rum on top, straight to the table. Hope you enjoy it. Trifle up next for a dessert. Again, a little bit of a twist on it. Make sure it comes out of the fridge about 10 to 15 minutes before you're going to serve it. In the bottom, we've got a clementine jelly uh, with saturns, little clementine segments. Uh, then we've got a clementine custard set on the top. Vanilla sponge in there, of course. And now the cream on the top, we've made a licorice creme dip them out. So, Basically, cut off your piping bag, <coughs> like so. And now we're gonna pipe some nice big piles. Like so. All the way around. And then finish off with your crispy compots. Excuse me. 
And there we go. Lovely clementine trifle with licorice creme dip. So our cheese course to finish. This week we were serving it with salted crackers. They're all ready to go there. Most importantly, it's room temperature for everything. So I've got my house chutney there. Get your bag, cut your cheese open. This has been out for at least 20 minutes before you serve it. And then just pull up the Uber Chef paper just on the top to reveal all your cheeses. Should be lovely and soft. And then arrange them in order according to your cheese tasting notes. It's really, really important. So I've got a lovely little ghost cheese to start with. Okay, I'm gonna get all of these onto the plate, all working round, and then you can kind of use your cheese tasting notes to have a nice little conversation through the meal if you agree on all of the tastes. Finishing off a lovely bit of gorgonzola. And I've got a bit of quince. I've got a chutney to serve with. Get my salted crackers. And let's just get some of those just resting just on the side of the plate like so. Serve it extra on the table. And there we go. Crackers. Get a few more on there. That's it, that's my weekly cheese course which completes this week's menu. Hope you have a lovely cook along, uh, get through the recipes, have a look at all of the colour code and the labels, really important, really, really simple. Have a great week, great menu, see you soon.